Hey guys, Dr. Axe here. Welcome to Ancient Medicine Today. Today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 toxic foods and the top 10 healing foods you should be getting in your diet every single day. Let's dive right in. We're going to talk about how to use food as how many people today are using food as poison. And then we're going to talk about how to use food as medicine. And by the way, hey, help me share this message. Press that share button right now. And if you like the video, click the like button as well. All right, here is the number one toxic food you need to stay away from, vegetable oil. You know, vegetable oil such as canola oil, soybean oil, corn oil, they're very high in omega-6 fatty acids, which is going to imbalance your omega-3 ratio, causing system-wide inflammation. This can cause high cholesterol. It can cause your skin to age faster. It can cause weight gain big time. And really just disease throughout your body contributing to things like autoimmune disease. So again, stay away from vegetable oils. Most of them are hydrogenated oils, and many of them are also come from GMO products. In fact, over 90% of vegetable oils today come from genetically modified plants, such as GMO corn, soy, and canola. Stay completely away. Number two, and by the way, if you are one of those people, I know my grandmother was convinced growing up that vegetable oil was good for us. Uh, I'm glad that I know now that's not true. But again, it's kind of tricky because people think, oh, vegetables are healthy. Vegetable oil, though, is not healthy. Switch to healthier alternatives we'll talk about here at the second part of our broadcast. Wheat products. You know, originally, I remember my wife and I, Chelsea, going over to Europe. We were over in Tuscany, and they have all of these rolling hills of these great vines, but they also have rolling hills of this beautiful golden wheat. They, their wheat over there is known as icorn, uh, einkorn wheat, and that type of wheat actually contains half the gluten. It's easier to digest. It's just a very different grain. Today, our grains or our wheat has gone through a process called hybridization to where now it has much more starch, has less nutrients, and has much higher levels of, levels of gluten than it did, let's say, a couple hundred of years ago. So what I would say is you want to stay completely away from all wheat products unless it's a sprouted ancient grain. Even then, only consuming it in small amounts. Go gluten-free if you can, unless it's a sprouted ancient grain. Most wheat products, not the best. Soy, you know, soy is, I'll tell you, this is one of the things that frustrates me the most. The reason is soy, 90% of it, is genetically modified. It's then typically isolated into a soy protein. And the thing that makes me so mad about this, and I would love to hear if this just, if, if this fires you up as well, but soy today is also put in infant baby formulas. We know that soy can be an endocrine disruptor. It can affect estrogen levels. And today, it's probably one of the top things that are found in infant and in baby formulas today. So it's absolutely crazy that we are putting soy in giving this to our kids. And hey, if you want other people to know the truth that soy should not be an infant formula, press share right now, help me get the message out, or can I get an amen or a yes if you agree with me right now, that soy should not be in infant formulas. It's in the same thing, hospital formulas, meal replacements. There's loads and loads of soy today. This is not a superfood unless, hey, if you're in Japan, uh, or if it was prepared as it was traditionally in Japan as a natto, which is a organic fermented soy consumed in certain amounts, then yes, it can be a good food. But today it's not organic. It's GMO. It's typically isolated. It's not fermented either. And so it's not the same thing. Number four, conventional dairy products. Listen, dairy, if it's grass fed, if it's organic, it's from a, uh, an animal like a goat, and then it's fermented, hey, it might be healthy. The problem is most conventional dairy today, in fact, a study out of Spain found that if you go and buy the, your average glass or gallon of milk has around over 21 different medications and chemicals in it, including uh, hormone, uh, different uh, hormonal drugs like estradiol. Um, it contains antibiotics. It contains growth hormones like RBA, uh, RGBH and RBGHT and some of these other growth hormones. Conventional dairy is one of the most toxic things you could ever put in your body. So if you agree with me on this, that dairy, and again, not all dairy, but 90% of dairy is highly toxic to the body, very dampening, causing weight gain, mucus and phlegm buildup, gut and digestive issues, so on and so forth. Let me know that right now here on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. But again, conventional dairy is white poison if it's not consumed in its completely natural and fermented form. Number five, corn. 
Remember, corn is GMO. Remember, just say no to GMOs. My buddy Jeffrey Smith, who started the non-GMO uh, movement, um, is a great person to search online. But we know that corn products, and listen, I'm not saying that corn is a bad food. You know, if you're consuming some certified organic corn on occasion, it, it, it can be okay for your health. But GMOs, what GMOs are, they've had literally the... Uh, pesticides and different types of viruses laced into their DNA to now they are toxic to your gut. They may kill off probiotics in your gut microbiome. Again, if you're against GMOs as well as me, hey, click the like button and the share button right now as well. But corn, toxic food, conventional meat products. You know, conventional meat, especially pork or conventional beef today, is loaded with steroids and growth hormones. We know pork today as a carrier of many different types of parasites, very, very toxic to the body, conventional meat. Now, I do believe there's a place in our diet for grass-fed, certified organic ma meat that is humanely raised and cared for. The problem is, again, 90% of meat today is these animals are raised in small cages. They're cooped up. They don't get the sun. That's a whole other thing. We've all heard the principle, you are what you eat, what they ate, right? So if cows are eating grass, then hey, they have more omega-3 fats, but it's not just eating grass, it's having happiness, it's actually being out in a pasture, it's drinking clean water, it's getting sunshine. All of these things that affect the animal, when we consume their meat, it actually affects us as well with their tissues. And so I know that we probably have some people watching here as well who are vegans and vegetarians, and for that reason, they don't consume any meat whatsoever. I, I, I don't go that far, but I do say only consume meat that is completely organic, grass-fed, humanely raised and cared for, all other meat is toxic to your body. Number seven, white flour products. White flour is basically sugar. This is, this is essentially sugar when you're eating it. It's highly inflammatory to the body. Stay away from white and wheat flour products, both there. Number eight, artificial sweeteners. We know artificial sweeteners such as sucralose and NutraSweet, they're toxic to the body. They may cause kidney and liver damage. They may support tumor growth. There have been some studies to prove it. I know one of the most popular studies was retracted because a pharmaceutical company uh, didn't like the study. But again, just to say artificial sweeteners, there's a great documentary called Sweet Misery. You may check out that documentary about the dangers of these toxic artificial sweeteners. Number nine is sugar. Plain old sugar is toxic to your body. Now, I'm not talking about raw local honey or blueberries. I'm talking about isolated sugar can feed candida, can feed yeast, potentially even cancer cells within the body, but sugar is toxic to your body. You want to stay completely away from it. And listen, tap water, this may shock you. Did you know tap water is loaded with chlorine and fluoride? Medical studies have actually shown that fluoride kills off probiotics in your gut. Do you know all of the things probiotics are responsible for? Probiotics actually create vitamins and minerals for you. They help you absorb nutrients. They modulate your entire immune system. They are critical for your overall health. We're destroying them by drinking tap water on a regular basis. And by the way, if you are enjoying the truth of this live broadcast right now. Take a minute right now and punch that short share button. There are millions of people that don't know the truth that genetically modified organisms, conventional meat and dairy products, tap water, these are toxic things that are absolutely destroying our bodies from the inside out. All right, now let's move into the top 10 healing foods. We should be focusing on getting these in our diet every single week. Number one here is kale and other green leafy vegetables. You know, kale is known as the king of the vegetable kingdom because it is so high in chlorophyll. It also is a cruciferous vegetable in ways and so contains some compounds that support liver detoxification, very high in calcium, very high in vitamin K, it is one of nature's true superfoods. So I would throw kale in that category, but also other greens such as collard greens, spinach is high up there, dandelion greens as well. Bone broth, one of my favorite superfoods, if not my very favorite. Most of us are missing the amino acids in bone broth today of proline, hydroxyproline, and glycine. These amino acids are kind of like the glue that hold our body together. They support healthy skin, they support our joints, they support our gut. Getting a bone broth liquid or doing a scoop of a protein powder that comes from bone broth 
every single day is something I've recommended. I recommend to all of my patients. It's something I do. In fact, I had it for breakfast and at, right after a workout here today already. So again, bone broth, you wanna make sure you are getting this every single day. Bone broth also contains the compounds hyaluronic acid, glucosamine, and chondroitin, which are incredible for healing and sealing a leaky gut and for different types of joint arthritis. It's fantastic. Number three here, salmon. You know, wild-caught salmon such as sockeye or king salmon is loaded with omega-3 fatty acids. We know omega-3s reduce inflammation. Also, that dark red color of salmon, that comes from an antioxidant called astaxanthin, which may in fact support athletic performance as well as anti-aging and may be a more powerful antioxidant than vitamin C and vitamin E both. So again, getting salmon in your diet, one of those super fish that is a great fish to get, and then blueberries. And by the way, again, if you are enjoying this live training on the top 10 superfoods, take a minute right now and click that share button. Help me spread the word that food is medicine. So blueberries, you know, blueberries actually contain many different unique types of antioxidants, flavonoids, but also, you know, that same antioxidant we hear that makes red wine so beneficial, resveratrol. Resveratrol is also found in grapes, in, in blueberry skins, okay? Not just grapes, but also blueberries. Blueberries are great for antioxidant, uh, for anti-aging. They're very high on the antioxidant scale. They've got a good type of fiber that's actually very gentle, but cleansing for your gut. And so blueberries, it's great to do blueberries on a daily basis. Um, flax seeds. You know, flax seeds contain different types of ligands that are um, have hormone balancing effects. Flax seeds are also very high in omega-3 fatty acids and are great and really high in fiber, so great for cleansing the colon. So, you know, I typically do a couple tablespoons of a sprouted flax meal in a bone broth smoothie every morning for breakfast. Cruciferous vegetables. You know, cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, watercress, these vegetables contain a compound that... that in your body that increases something in the body called indole 3 carbonyl that actually detoxifies uh, estrogen-based compounds. So have you ever heard that pl drinking out of plastic or heated plastic is bad for you? The reason is is because it contains phytoestrogens. Well, cruciferous vegetables help your body detoxify phytoestrogens from your body, really have tremendous health benefits. Also, they're very high in sulfur, great for anti-aging great for um, supporting cellular health. So get more cruciferous vegetables. Now, I don't recommend cruciferous vegetables raw. I recommend consuming them cooked or fermented as you would get in, let's say, a sauerkraut or a kimchi. Number three here is chicken and beef liver. Did you know part of the original Gershon therapy, an anti-cancer protocol, uh, was not just juicing vegetables, but it was consuming raw calf's, calf's liver or beef liver that was oftentimes pressed and juiced. And the reason is, is liver is known as nature's B vitamin. It's very high in B vitamins. Also, it supports the detoxification of your own liver there as well. Number eight is kefir. I mentioned this earlier. We need more probiotics. You know, you aren't what you eat. You are what you digest. If you don't have enough good bacteria in your intestines and gut microbiome, you are not digesting many of the nutrients you're eating properly. You know, probiotics, again, kefir is, has more probiotics than any other food on the planet in most cases. Again, kefir, very, very high in probiotic count. So if somebody needs to build up the bacteria, kefir is the ultimate superfood, which is great for the immune system and gut health. And then mushrooms, you know, medicinal mushrooms such as reishi, shiitake, maitake, turkey tail. These mushrooms are great. It's great to do a mushroom broth soup on a regular basis. You can do it with like rice and chicken. It's absolutely delicious. But mushrooms are known as acting as adaptogens, helping balance cortisol and help your body better deal with stress. They're also great for naturally energy production. Again, for f boosting the immune system and even some studies on them fighting cancer. You know, reishi mushroom in Chinese medicine was known as the mushroom of immortality. It was that beneficial for the health. And the number 10 superfood you wanna try and get in your diet every single week is a seaweed. You can do a seaweed powder such as spirulina or chlorella 
are great as well. There's also you know, wakame and different types of seaweed salads you could do. But seaweed is one of the most nutrient-dense superfoods on the planet. Very high in chlorophyll, very high in B vitamins, and very high in plant-based protein as well, and very detoxifying. In fact, there are studies showing that, that seaweeds may support and protect your body from radi radiation damage and other chemical um, and other toxic exposures there as well. So getting seaweed on your diet is another great thing you can do. And by the way, hey, if you've enjoyed this live training, do me a favor, press the share button, click the like button, help me get this message out that food is medicine. Let's do a quick rundown. Here's the top 10 things you gotta get out of your diet now. Vegetable oil, wheat products, soy, conventional dairy, GMO corn, conventional meat, white flour, artificial sweeteners, sugar, and tap water. Here are the top 10 foods you wanna consume. Kale and other green leafy vegetables, bone broth, salmon, blueberries, flax seeds, also cruciferous vegetables, chicken liver or beef liver, kefir, mushrooms, and seaweed. Hey, if you switch out those 10 and add in these 10, you are gonna take your health to a whole new level. Also, hey, if you're not subscribed here, make sure you subscribe to our Facebook Live page our YouTube channel, as well as our Instagram page there as well. And if you wanna learn more about these things, you can also check out my site, draxe.com. Guys, this has been me, Dr. Axe, talking about the top 10 toxic foods and top 10 healing foods you wanna get in your diet now.